Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 2 of the chapter Solutions. In part 1, I told you that solutions are homogeneous mixtures of two or more components. And then I went ahead to tell you that in this chapter, we would be studying binary solutions, which means solutions which have only two components. And then I went ahead to classify the solutions in, on the basis of the solvent, that is that substance which is present in larger quantities known as the solvent and that substance which is present in lesser quantities known as the solute. And on the basis of solvents, we can categorize solutions into solids, liquids and gaseous solutions. And in each category, we had three types of solutes in all the three physical states, that is solid, liquid and gas. So we had solid and solid type of solution, solid and uh, liquid and solid and gas and solid. And then we had solid in liquid, solid, uh, liquid in liquid and gas in liquid. And then we had uh, solid in gas, uh, we had um, liquid in gas and uh, gas in gas kind of solutions. Now, in this chapter, we are mainly going to study solutions of the liquid category, that is where the solvent is a liquid. And let us now start understanding more about these solutions. When you are talking of solutions, you want to talk about their concentration. For example, if I ask you, uh, I'm making you a cup of tea. I come with a tea uh, kettle and it's got milk and it's got water uh, with the tea in it, uh, the tea bags. I have sugar so I ask you what kind how would you like your tea would you like it to be with milk or would you like it to be with half and half or would you like it to be with cream or would you like uh, 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 would you like uh, one tea bag in it or would you like two tea bags in it would you like uh, more sugar or would you like less sugar so you will make the tea according to your choice so when I say just generally okay let me let's get a cup of tea the cup of tea that I may serve you may not be of your choice because maybe you like more tea leaves, maybe you like less milk, maybe you do not like cream in it, maybe uh, you do not want sugar or maybe you want sugar and how much of it you want. So as, when you talk of a solution, you can't use, a, you have to specify the quantity or the concentration of the solution. In this video, I'm going to talk about how uh, what are the different ways in which we can express the concentrations of solutions? Now, there are two ways how you can main ways how which uh, by which you can express these concentrations. The first is qualitative and the other is quantitative. Qualitative is that, um, okay, this is a, a solution and this is concentrated. This is a concentrated solution. This one's a dilute solution. When I say a solution is concentrated, I mean that a large amount, it contains a large amount of the solute in it. And when I say it is a dilute solution, it means that there is very little solute in it. And I might even use a third uh, term here. I might say the, the solution is saturated. Saturated means that maximum amount of solute that can be added to it has already been added. If you add more solute to the solvent, it will remain undissolved. So that kind of a solution is saturated. It is completely full. But again, this kind of a description of a solution is very vague. Imagine that there is a surgeon who is working on a, on a patient. And he tells the anesthetist that we need a little anesthesia because I want this uh, patient not to realize the pain. So the anesthetist he doesn't know. He doesn't know about what quantity of anesthesia he has to put. So what does he do? He says, okay, let me give him a dilute solution of anesthesia. Or let me give him a little concentrated. No, he's not, he's not uh, getting unconscious with this. So let us give him a concentrated amount. And if he does that, the patient may actually lose his life. So when you're talking in science or in medicine or in industry, the pharmaceutical industry, you really are talking extremely uh, precise quantities in micrograms, in milliliters, maybe in even lesser quantities of solute in the solvent when you're making the medicines or when you're making using an anesthetic. Therefore, the qualitative way of talking of uh, the concentrations is not is very vague and therefore not used much in science when we talk of uh, it's a dilute solution it's a concentrated solution or it's a saturated solution is pretty vague so scientists may use it when when the exact quantities are not really very important but when it is important you have to be very specific about the amount of solvent and the amount of solute in the binary solution 
since we are talking only of binary solutions so i'm just going to talk about all examples would be of binary solutions now there are seven different ways by we can by which we can express the concentration of solutions quantitatively when we talk of quantity you have to specify the quantity of the solute the quantity of the solvent and how is that done let us study them one by one the first way of expressing the concentration is mass percentage you can understand mass or mass is the uh, everything has weight mass is uh, actually um, mass into gravity is weight so you could say that uh, weight upon gravity would be mass so the mass percentage but in chemistry basically we talk of mass and weight we treat them uh, as the same so mass or weight do you see here i've written w by w which means weight by weight percentage you understand what is your percentage in your chemistry exam the paper was of 100 marks and out of which you got let's say 90 marks so 90 marks are out of a total of 100 so the 90 belong to that 100 right so similarly when we talk of a mass percentage we are talking of the mass of the solute in the total mass of the solution into 100 will give us the percentage of the solute present in the solution by mass when we are measuring both the solute and the solvent by their masses we report the concentration as mass percentage so what is mass percentage it is weight upon weight ratio of a component so what is the mass percentage of a component mass percentage would be equal to the mass of that particular component which is the solution we are talking of binary solutions mass of that solute divided by the total mass of the solution which means the total mass of solute plus solvent into 100 which means how many parts of a hundred gram how many grams out of 100 grams is the solute whatever unit of mass you take so it is mass percentage for example, when you say 10% of glucose by weight, what does it mean? It means there is 10 grams of glucose in 100 grams of the solution. And in the 100 grams of the solution, how much is water? 10 grams is glucose, so 90 grams is water. Right? So this is mass percentage. Similarly, sometimes it is not you have liquids and it is not possible to find out the weights of liquids because it would be a two-step process. First, you will weigh the jar in which the liquid is there and then you will put the liquid and then you will weigh the uh, jar with the liquid. Instead of doing that, why not just go in for the volume? Take a jar and find out the volume. So you can make solutions in terms of volume by volume also. When you have both the solute and the solvent are liquids, there you can make solutions and your measurement can be in terms of volume and volume so what would volume percentage be volume percentage would be the volume of that particular component that is the solute divided by the volume total volume of the solution that is volume of solute plus solvent into 100 will give you the volume percentage just as you got the mass percentage this time the measurement instead of being mass in terms of mass is a measurement in volume now sometimes what happens you uh, uh, okay here let's take an example here 10 percent ethanol would mean that there is 10 milliliters of ethanol for every 90 milliliters of water in nine and 90 milliliters of water or 10 milliliters of ethanol in 100 milliliters of the solution when we say do you know that 35 percent solution of ethylene glycol is used as antifreeze in cars why is it used as an antifreeze because it depresses the freezing point of water to 255.4 kelvin 273 kelvin is zero degrees celsius so it reduces it by 17.6 degrees the temperature or at minus 17.6 degrees celsius the antifreeze freezes so it depresses the freezing point and therefore it is used as an antifreeze and for, to make that the percentage is 35 percent of ethylene glycol and the percentage is in terms of volume so we say it is 35 percent ethylene glycol solution by volume not by mass now what happens in the pharmaceutical industry you may be using a liquid but the medicine that you may be putting in it may be a solid so now first you have to turn that in either you 
measure both by masses or easier is use the solute find out the mass of the solute but keep measuring the solvent in terms of uh, the or the solution in terms of volume so that can also be done so the third is mass by volume percentage you take the mass of the solute divided by the volume of the solvent into uh, sorry volume of the solution into 100 right because once you keep adding the solute the total volume or you'll take a measuring cylinder and you'll put the solute and you'll put the uh, solvent in it and you'll dissolve it and then you'll start putting more and more of the solvent in it, in it to bring it to let us say you're preparing 100 milliliter solution so whatever mass you put of the solute for that concentration that you wanted you will start adding water to it to bring it to that 100 ml mark so now you have a 100 milliliter solution of let us say 20 grams of glucose it's a 20 gram by 100 ml so that is mass by volume percentage the next way of uh, telling or uh, accounting for the concentration of a solution is in parts per million when you have an extremely extremely dilute solution that is when parts per million are important one part in a million parts that is like you do in the case of chloroform or the anesthetics that i use a very very minuscule amount of anesthetic has to be used in that solution do you know that if in air there is just six parts per million of carbon monoxide it can cause the death of a person even that little amount of carbon carbon monoxide in air is enough to block enough uh, red blood cells in the body to cause the death of a person so you can imagine the concentration which is so little is also so important when it is in a life and death kind of a situation so for such solutions or such uh, situations we always measure the concentration of the solution in terms of parts per million when you're trying to find out something toxic that has entered the body even there the toxicity may may be felt in just parts per million so you would have there is where 1 million is 10 to the power 6 so when we say percent per hundred per million would be what did we do for percent we found out the mass of the solute upon the mass of the total solution into 100 to find out in parts in 100 that is percentage so in parts per million would be the now this would be exactly like you found out the percentages instead of per hundred parts these measurements are for 10 to the power six parts so you will have the same ratios mass by mass either you can measure the masses of solute and solvent or you can measure volume and volume of solute and solvent or you can measure mass and volume in parts per million too so what would how would you measure the parts per million the number of parts of the component either in terms of weight or in terms of volume and upon the total number of total parts of the all the components in the solution if it is binary then the total the total number of parts of solute plus solvent if it is tertiary or whatever then you would uh, you will need the total number of all the parts of the solution into for percent it was into 100 for a, a million it is into a million and what is a million into 10 to the power 6 now example in the sea uh, water you have about 5.8 parts per million of dissolved oxygen which is responsible for aquatic life life in the ocean is possible because of this 5.8 parts per million of oxygen present in the ocean and this can also be uh, another way of uh, writing it would be micrograms per milliliter would also be parts per million or you can call it parts per million the fifth method of reporting the concentration of a solution is mole fraction now since we are talking of chemistry we usually report things in, not in terms of grams or volume we may like to talk in terms of moles so mole fraction as you've already studied in class 11 
is the number of moles of one component that is the solute let us say divided by the total number of moles of all the components if the solution is not binary it is tertiary or has a larger number of components then the total number of moles of all the components and the number of moles of that component whose mole fraction you want to find out divided by the total number of moles of all the components will give you the mole fraction it is that fraction of the whole and the whole is always one you have one whole solution out of this one whole this part is this fraction so fractions are always of one whole so a fraction of this is this component and the rest of it is the solvent let us say so for example you have the you want to find out mole fraction mole fraction is represented by x of a component a in a mixture of a and b the mole fraction of a would be equal to number of moles of a divided by number of moles of a plus number of moles of b that is the total number of moles of one component divided by the total number of moles of all the components that will give you mole fraction of a and if we want to give a generalized formula for calculating mole fraction let us say there are i components in a mixture in a solution you have you have i components and you want to find out the mole fraction of i the component i then mole fraction of i xi would be equal to number of moles of i divided by number of moles of the first component second component third component fourth component fifth component up to you get to number of moles of i component or in generally we can give a formula as xi would be equal to number of moles of i divided by the summation of the number of moles of all the components just a mathematical way of expressing it it is the summation of the number of moles it says nothing but the same thing that the number of moles of that component divided by the sum of the total number of moles of all the components and if we take the mole fractions of each component let us say n1 would be x1 x2 x3 x4 2xi then the sum of all the moles uh, mole fractions should be equal to 1 why because that is making one whole and a fraction of that whole is one component a fraction of that whole is the second component a fraction of that whole is the third component fourth component fifth component up to component i but all of them together make one whole so the inner solution the sum of all mole fractions is always equal to unity this is this you may find useful in some of the uh, numerical problems that you would be solving the, the sum of all mole fractions would always be equal to 1 so if you have mole fractions of all and but one and you want to find it find that out you can find out the sum of all of those and is equal to 1 so 1 minus all of those would give you the mole fraction let us say you don't have x3 you can find out x3 by the sum of all of these 1 minus some of the remaining mole fractions would give you x3 that is mole fraction of the third a third component now there are two more ways of expressing the um, the concentrations that is molarity and molality let me define those two and then in the next video we'll solve a few numerical problems using this information now the sixth way of expressing the concentration is in terms of molarity we have done this in class 11 where we did the basic concepts of chemistry where i did the entire mole concept and i spoke of molarity molality these are concepts and mole fraction these are things that you already know in case you do not remember it i would encourage you to go back to those topics and watch those videos that i've already made and they really make these concepts very clear to you but let me just summarize or just give you an idea what molarity and molality are Molarity is defined as the number of moles of the solute present in one liter of the solution. Now, instead of finding out the mass, we find out the number of moles of a solute, the number of moles of a solute divided by the volume of the solution in liters. So molarity is represented by the letter capital M. It is the number of moles of the solute dissolved in one liter or one decimeter cube of the solution. So if we say 0.25 moles per liter of sodium hydroxide, it means I'm talking of its molarity. It means that 0.25 moles of sodium hydroxide is present in one liter of the solution. So and I would write it as 0.25 MnaOH where M is capital. 
The last way of expressing verb concentration is in terms of molality. Molality instead of R you have an L here. Molality. And it is represented by small m. Now we noticed that, that in all the six definitions or in all the six ways in which we expressed the concentration, in the denominator we always had either the mass of the solution or we had the volume of the solution, right? This is the only measurement where sometimes it is not possible to really measure both the solute and the solvent together. And you want an exact amount of the solvent too. For that we use molality. In this, what is the definition? It is the number of moles of the solute present in one kg of the solvent. So it is in terms of the mass of the solvent and mass of only the solvent, not the entire solution. So when we talk of molality, molality is the number of moles of the solute per kg of the solvent. Here, the solvent is very, very important because this is the only measurement in which in the denominator, we have a measurement only for solvent, not, not for the entire solution. So when I say that you have a one moles per kg of KCl in molality, it means I have one mole of KCl present in one kilogram of water. Water is exactly one kilogram and you are adding one mole of KCl to it. So you will not be measuring the volume or the mass after adding the solute. Here the solute is measured separately, solvent is measured separately and then they are mixed together to give you a molal solution. There is another thing that is very important. Which out of these is a better way of measuring? When would you like to choose molality? When would you choose parts per million, mole fraction or the mass percentage, volume percentage, mass over volume percentage? When do we use which one or parts per million? It depends on what are you measuring? First of all, I told you parts per million would be when you have to be very, very accurate. Mass upon mass when it is easier, when you have a solid and it is easier to measure the masses. Volume over volume when both of them are liquids. The, so for whatever purpose you are using, you will choose your measurement of concentration according to what you are using the solution for. And the measurement of that, which one is easier for you? And there is one more thing, which ones are accurate? Anything that involves volume of the solution or volume of the solute, volume of the solvent, wherever you have volumes, volume, you should know, if you heat up a liquid, it expands. If you heat up a gas, it expands. So matter on heating usually expands. So the volume changes, it is temperature dependent. So whatever is the molarity of a substance at a lower temperature, the molarity at a higher temperature will become different because the volume of the solution will change. So all the measurements which involve volume are temperature de dependent. So whenever you are going to talk of them, you will have to specify the temperature too. So which are the measurements where you use only masses? Those concentrations will not be temperature dependent and therefore you can say they would be, they would be applicable for a wider range of temperature. For example, mass percentage uses only mass of solute upon mass of solution in 200. So there is no volume, therefore it is independent of temperature. Parts per million in terms of masses would also be the same. Mole fraction is the number of moles of the solute divided by number of moles of the solution. Therefore, total number of moles of all the components. Therefore, that also is not temperature dependent because you're not measuring volume. And molality, this last one is also number of moles is a number, specific number of particles and mass. There is no volume measurement. Therefore, molality is also independent of temperature. All other measurements like molarity, you would have a volume uh, percentage or mass over volume percentage or parts per million in terms of volume or this or uh, yes, that's all. All of these would be dependent on temperature. So this was uh, an idea of the various ways how we can report the concentrations of solutions. With this, I'll finish this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please, please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.